This is round 14 of Blackstone Fortress. Did I say this already? I looked through the cards of this expedition and I realized that I doubled up. This is the final combat and final, f final encounter of this expedition meaning that after this is over, I'll be returning to Precipice. But, I mean, that's not gonna happen yet. First off, we have to get through, through this encounter. Two, 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 two. Wow, that's horrible. And now I'll just roll a bunch of d6s for activations. So we've got, let's see, everyone's got something wrong with them. But we'll start in the order that I have on the table back here. So I've got Taddeus first, and that's a three, five, and six. Now I got Pius Vorn, who also has a grievous wound, just like Taddeus. Six, three, and four. Three, four, six. That's really similar. Here's Amelin. She's got two grievous wounds. So she's only got two activations to spend. Five and six, that's good. And then last but not least is Janus Drake, who has one wound, just a normal standard everyday wound, which he can heal. Uh, so he's got a one, four, and five. And I might have him really literally just spend that one to revitalize his his wounds. Oh, I was I was actually ready to go, but okay, so I've shuffled the initiative deck again. Let's take a look at it before because Janus might want to do a gambit or something, so it's <laughs> Janus is first, and then Amelin, and then Pius, and then Hostile Group 2, those are the Urghuls, so that won't be good, and then Taddeus, okay, and then Traitor Guardsmen, and then obviously the Spindle Drones. So, as I have said before, I kind of prefer it when when on the first round, things kind of lean towards the hostiles going before the players. But okay, th that's, that's what we have to, to deal with. So I, I think we'll just go with it. Okay, so first up is, is Janus. So I, I really think, yeah, I think right off the top of the bat, just especially since this is the first turn, might as well spin to one to uh, do a vitality roll. Vitality roll, if successful, can remove a wound. And it was not successful, it was a fail. So he does not remove his wound. I'm going to spend another dice on... Oh, I don't roll the dice, I just spend it. Another dice on another vitality roll. And that is a critical, so he does get to remove his wound. So now he, on the next round, he's going to get to do a full full activation four dice the whole the whole thing and so i'll have him spend his his five just to move out of the maglev chamber he moves two at a time one two cuz he's kind of slow so he's got a pretty good visibility here you know he's staring down the the fork in the road which is kind of good because if if anyone gets a stealth action we know that he can't that they can't move into his sight so right now, he's got good overview. He's keeping a, a lookout. Amelin. She's a pretty fast mover, Amelin. Uh, she's got, I think, a three movement. Yeah, she does. And she's got a five and a six. I, I kind of feel like this is a little bit uh, being wasted. Oh, we can get rid of these. So early in the game, a five and a six. But maybe I can make it work. I mean, I could have her spend the four to move out yeah i might have her do that um have her spend the four to move one two three have her move the uh, use her five five to go one two hmm, yeah three and then does she have visibility i mean yes i think she does um i mean we can always confirm it with our our laser pointer yeah i would say that she's got Ghoul visibility. Now there's cover here, but she's a sharpshooter. She's got a, a scope on her rank, on her rifle, and she's got a six. Six is her superpower. Well, actually, no, it's not. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, uh, six four plus is a superpower for her, and that's fine because she can do uh, an attack whilst ignoring cover. 
And because it's one, two, three, four hexes away, she gets to roll a d12, I believe. Yes, d12 with her long rifle. So let's see what happens there. It's a hit. It's just a single hit, not a critical hit. It's too bad. But I mean, you gotta start somewhere. Okay, so one of these ghouls has has a wound now, thanks to Amelin. Yeah, not bad. Okay. Next up is Pius Vorn. Um, so I think, so I think, I, I think the, 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 the direction I'm going in, if it's not obvious, is southwest. Because here, at least, there are no hostels. There are portals for a maglev chamber everywhere, and they're all being guarded by a hostile group. Except this one. So that's my theory. Send everyone southwest. I understand that that also means that all the hostile groups are going to run southwest. Like, they follow the players, so I, you know, the explorers. So I have no illusions about that, but that's, that's the idea. I'm wondering, this is going to sound crazy, but what if I sent Pius Vorn one, two, three, and just had her, so let's assume I spent a three for her move, and I just put her into Overwatch. Because, I mean, these traitor guardsmen are going to come rushing at us one way or the other. I mean, that's just, that's how it goes. And so they're going to they're gonna appear in this hallway. I think I did this last time, or a couple of times ago, and it didn't work out for me. But she does have a, or no, an Inferno unique action that she could do on a 4+. plus. This action be, can be taken once per activation phase. Place an Inferno marker in up to two empty hexes that are visible to Pius Vorn and adjacent to each other. When an explorer or a hostile enters that hex, make a D8 attack against it. Ignoring cover. Remove the Inferno markers the next time Pius Vorn is activated. So I'm going to take that 4 and spend it. So it has to be visible to her, so I'll just put it here and here. And then I've got a 6 still. And I'm thinking maybe put her into Overwatch. So she's got a 5 waiting to happen. Okay. I feel like that's... Strategically, I think that's a pretty good play. I guess we'll find out relatively soon. Two. Who's on two? Ghouls. Okay, so for the ghouls, I need to roll a Blackstone Fortress die, and I got a 12. Now the ghouls are within sight of an explorer. So that means that they are... They're not engaged. They're not close. They are other. So they're going to rush. Rush is a special action for the Urghuls. You move towards the closest explorer, then take a charge. So that's not good, because Urghuls are fast, so they're going to get very close to Amelin. One, two, three. So they're already adjacent. One, two, three. One, two, three. And so then they're, they're quote-unquote charging. I mean, they've already kind of charged. But they're, they're doing the charge action. And the charge action is to move to the closest explorer and make an attack. So that's a lot of attacks against Amelin. Um, probably enough to kill her. So I'll, I guess I'll just do it one ghoul at a time. Ghoul 1 will attack her three times. Because that's how ghouls attack. And that's one critical. Uh, and one, f one miss. So that's a third attack, and that's a third and third miss. So now Amelin gets to defend against that. Amelin has a defense of, unfortunately, a d6. No one ever succeeds at a d6 roll in this game, except Amelin. Um, so she does succeed, but it's against a critical. I don't remember what that means. The grievous wound is. Uh, converted to a wound. That's right. I knew that. Okay, so she has one wound. Now, if she gets one more wound, she is out of the game. Because her card, she has two Grievous and one wound. So she has, 
she can she, there's only one more square of her activation like she she'll no longer be able to activate all right so this is ghoul 2 now rolling 2 d8s and two misses i mean that's not going to last and a hit a standard hit she gets to roll to defend but she never and she indeed failed uh, so she gets another wound so she is out of the game that's too bad cuz she was is a very heavy hitter. She's not dead. She's just out of action. Okay, so that was that's that's the second ghoul. So now the the rules say if there's so we we have to imagine I, I kind of jumped the gun. So that was two ghouls that attacked Amelin. Now we have to assume that this third ghoul needs to resolve its actions. It's a rush action, which is to move make a move to the closest explorer. So that's Janus and Pius, really. So that's, oops, one, two, three. Okay, well, that's where he was. And then do a charge action, which allows him to then do one, two, three. He's still not adjacent. I believe with the charge, he gets to move again. Charge, move towards the closest explorer, then attack an explorer that is adjacent and visible. If there is none, then move towards the closest explorer a second time. Okay, so now he's at the closest explorer, but the charge action doesn't say to attack uh, after that second move. It sounds like that move was its attack, so... Which I think is defensible. I mean, that's what was, something like six, six or seven or eight. Yeah, it's something like eight hexes in one move. I just don't see physically how he would have time to do all of that and attack when he gets there. I think that's that's fortunate. That's what that is. Taddeus. Okay, Taddeus, we need you to kill something. Um, all right, Taddeus is going to spend his three to move. I think he only moves two. He's a he's a pretty slow slow mover as well. One, two, and to get into. Oh wait, she has Overwatch. Pius Vorn has Overwatch. I, I believe that that means now she can kill, she can attack the ghoul with a five. So I should resolve that first. Okay. So Pius Vorn adjacent to a creature. She can use a Vindicator Chain Blade, which is a D12 roll because it's a five or up. If if it was something lower, well, if it was a one or th one to two or three, then she couldn't do that. But she's got a pretty good thing. She does one, one, one damage, so that, that helps, you know, I mean, every little bit helps. It's not a critical, but it, it helps. So there we go. And now back to Taddeus. He spent his three to move. He's going to spend his five to move again. And now he's got a six, which, um, I mean, he's got his power maul, or he's got his servo stubber. The servo stubber won't work in melee, so he has to use his power maul, which is a d12. For superstitious reasons, I'm going to swap out the d12 so that I you know, can't, can't roll the same one twice in a row. And wow, good thing I did. That's a critical. And that means that this guy is dead, because that's uh, that flips that over and then removes them. One, two. So that's good. So that's three wounds that he... That's a three-wound-valued uh, three, three wound valued opponent that Taddeus is responsible for removing. So Taddeus gets to roll a Blackstone Fortress die in hopes of getting inspiration. He rolls a 20. He needed a 1, 2, or 3. So he is not inspired by his victory. Which is pretty common. I, I don't believe inspiration actually exists in this game. Or I'm doing it horribly wrong, which is impossible. Three, that's the, uh, that's the group of angry men up there at the top, the northeast corner. So this is, these are the traitor guardsmen. So I roll a Blackstone Fortress die to get their action. It's a seven. And I look back at their card. They are not within view of anyone. So they are considered, they are considered hidden. And so they're going to take an advance action. An advance uh, move action 
It says, move towards the closest explorer, then attack the closest explorer that is in range and visible. That's this guy first. He'll move here. Oh, he hits an Inferno token, which means that I get to make a D8 attack against him, and that is a critical hit. He only has two wounds, so he is removed from the board. That is really, really satisfying. <laughs> Good job, Pius. That is exactly what I wanted. Uh, I'm going to just verify that those tokens get removed after they've been... Remove the Inferno tokens the next time Pius Vorn is activated, or if she is taken out of action. So it doesn't sound like they get removed. I think this is just fire. Like, it's burning. It's fire. These guys stupidly rush into those flames because they're crazy people. And actually, that guy, yeah, he could have. Okay, so no one's going to actually reach that. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. That's too bad. Oh, and this guy. One, two, okay. That's too bad, because those, those, those tokens are going to go away. I, I just would have loved for them to just keep running into it. That would have been so great. And then one does the spindle drones. That's a 15 for a spindle drone. Let's find out what that means for them. 15. They are hidden, so they are going to advance. Their move speed is also 2, so they're not going really anywhere. They're just 1, 2, 1, 2. That's, that's not even a turn, really. Next activation for Pius. That's what I have to keep in mind. That's, that's how that rule works, so I need to remember that. Um... So that's this that's that's the round. That's one full round. Amelin has been removed. We have our explorers just in a cluster here at the bottleneck. And actually, you know what? I'm not even sure if they're legally placed there now that I'm seeing where they are. Oops. Yeah, they might be illegally placed, frankly. Because I don't, I don't I feel like Two big, big people and three small people can be on one hex. So I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Too late to change it now. Trust me. Uh, it would, that would be a lot of trouble to go to. So we'll just say that Taddeus um, finishes his move here, even though he couldn't do that, but let's say he did. I mean, honestly, that could be worse for him because the ghouls are going to come rushing. Okay, so I've, I've sort of shuffled the initiative deck don't know who's next, but next time we'll find out. Thanks for watching.